Hi, hello guys. Well, welcome back to my YouTube channel, myself Akshay. I am studying in Sri Venkateshwar College of Engineering in the branch of CSC. Today, I am going to discuss about co-processor. So, let's start from introduction to co-processor. So, co-processor or specialized processing unit designed to enhance the performance of the main processor, such as CPU. So, it is CPU by handling specific tasks. They operate alongside the CPU, offloading computational burden and accelerating critical operations. So, the Go processor or the specialized processing unit designed to enhance the performance of a main processor. The main processor is nothing but CPU, central processing unit. And it offloading computational burden and accelerating critical operations. So, what is coprocessor? I think many of you know what is coprocessor. The coprocessor is a specialized hardware component that works in conjunction with the CPU to improve the overall performance of a system. It's designed to handle specific tasks that are computationally intensive or required specialized processing capabilities. So, the coprocessor or specialized hardware components, components that works in the conjunction with the CPU to improve the overall performance of the system. It is designed to handle specific tasks. So, such as uh, computational intensive or maybe required spe specialized processing capabilities. So, the next one is offloading task and specialized processing. So, in the offloading task, the group processor takes over specific tasks from the CPU central processing unit, freeing up the CPU to focus on the other task. So it freeing, so it freeing up the CPU to focus on the task. In specialized processing, they they are the optimized for specific type of operations such as graphic processing, mathematical calculations, or Signal processing, sir. Okay. So, in coprocessors, co there are types such as graphic processing unit, it is called as GPU, and another one is DSP, it is known as digital signal processor, and the third one is FPGS, so it is known as field program gate arrays. So, the types of coprocessors are comes in various types, each designed to excel in specific domains. Each excels in specific domains, they are categorized based on their functionalities and targets applications. The first one is GPUs. So in this, the GPUs are specialized processing designs for graphic rendering and parallel processing. Often it is used in gaming and scientific computing, com computing or computing. Okay. The next one is DSPs. So in DSPs are optimized for signal processing task, commonly used in audio and video processing and communications and medical devices. And the third one is FPGS. So it is nothing but it reconfigurable hardware devices that can be programmed to implement custom logic circuits offering a flexible and adaptability for a specific applications. So the next one is the benefits of using a coprocessor. The use of coprocessor offers numerous advantages that can be significantly, significantly enhance system performance and capabilities. So there are three benefits. There are three benefits. There are three benefits. Those are increased performance, enhanced functionality, reduces or reduced power consumption. In the increased performance, the coprocessor accelerates specific tasks, freeing up the CPU to focus on other operations, leading to overall performance improvement. And in enhancement functionality, the coprocessor provides specific processing capability, enabling system to perform tasks that would be difficult or impossible to 
performed by CPU alone. So the third point is reduce power consumption. So it is also a main main point, or it is a main benefit. So the coprocessor can be more energy efficient than CPU central processing UPU, central processing units for specific tasks such as reducing overall power consumptions. So there are applications for coprocessors. There are applications for coprocessors. Coprocessors are widely used across diverse industries and applications contributing to advancement in technology and innovation. So the coprocessor is used in gaming and the coprocessor is used in artificial intelligence. It's also known as AI. So the coprocessor is used in scientific computing and the coprocessor is used in image and video processing. So we know that gaming overall, so majority of those will play the games and all. So in that we need the graphics and all the graphics should be in high quality to so the GPU. GPU are essential for delivering the high quality graphics and immersive gaming experience. So if you want a good gaming experience means the coprocessor will deliver the high quality graphics for playing the games in artificial intelligence. So in AI, the coprocessor accelerate AI algorithm enabling fast processing and more efficient machine learning in and the third one is scientific computing the coprocessor are used in high performance computing for complex simulations simulations and data analysis and the image and video processing so image and video processing all we know so in the phone in the basic phone also we can do a we can capture an image or we can capture a video so for processing the image and video, so in the DPs, DSPs and GPUs are used in the image and video editing, video editing and it is also used in compressing or and it also used in real time processing. So while capturing an image or a video or capturing a video to process in the real time the coprocessor is also used or it may be used in such fields also like camera photographies and all so the challenges implementing in coprocessor what are the challenges so the first challenge is hardware compatibility and the second challenge is software integration third challenge is perform performance optimization in the first okay we can we have we can discuss the Challenges in implementing coprocessor. While coprocessor offers numerous benefits, their implements, implementation can be present challenge that requires careful con consideration and planning. So, while implementing the coprocessor, we should be careful and we should be pre plan what we want to do and what we are going to do, all we should know. So, in the hardware compatibility, we need to ensure seamless integration with the main system and the other components and in the software integration we need to develop a software that efficiently utilize the coprocessor compatibility and the op optimization performance in the third one is performance optimization fine turning the system to achieve optim optimal performance by balancing workload distributing between the cpu and the coprocessor so we know what is CPU. CPU is nothing but central processing unit, and the coprocessor. It is a main point we are discussing. We are discussing what what still now discuss and what we are discussing further. So it is a coprocessor. So next one, selecting the right coprocessor. So how to select the right coprocessor? Does anyone know what is or how can we select? the right coprocessor okay i'll explain but choosing the right coprocessor for a specific application required a, throughout the evaluation of a factor such as performing recruitments 
and we need to see the capability with the systems and we need to see the cost concentration. So, first one is what the application requirements. And the second one is budget constraints. Sorry, before that, we need to uh, see that performance needs. And the last one is availability, uh, available options. So, we can see here the application requirement. So, in the application requirement, what, is, what we need identifying the specific task and the processing needs to be applications. In the second one, performance needs. What the performance needs? So, we want to analyze that what the performance we need we need or uh, the performance it needs. So, determining the level of performance required for the application such as processing speed and throughout port. And the third one is budget constraints. So, we need to consider the cost of the coprocessor and its impacts and overall system budget. So, first we need the first we need to know what is the budget and what the what the coprocessor will do. And the last one is available options. What are all options available in the coprocessor? So, exploring the different types of coprocessor available and their sustain sustainabilities for the availability available sorry applications. So, future trends in coprocessor technology. So, we know that what are the future trends in the coprocessor technology. The first one is coprocessor technology is continuously evolving with the advancement delivering by the increasing demands of performing efficiently and specialized capabilities. Increased power, sorry, increased processing power. Coprocessors are expected to become even more powerful capable of handling increasing complex and computational intensive task. It improves energy efficiently. The coprocessor co will improve the energy efficiently by focusing on optimizing power consumption, enabling more efficient and the sustainability computing systems. So, it is greater integrity. We all know that what is greater integrity. The coprocessors are likely to become more tightly integrated with CPU. It is tightly integrated with CPU and with the other system components, enhancing their capabilities and the reducing latencies. Okay. In A acceleration, continued development of coprocessing speci specifically designed for accelerating A algorithms driving advancements in machine learning and deep learning. So, in AI, there are such as called ML and DL. So, don't worry about that. So, ML is nothing but machine learning and DL is nothing but so deep learning. So, once you go to AI, when you optimize AI, in that uh, you will study about uh, machine learning and deep learning. So hope everyone understand what I said and what you've seen in the PPT. So if anyone didn't get what I said, just go back to the PPTs and read that what are all those. If you want, I'll give a download link of the PPT in the description so you can check out there. So thank you for watching guys. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Okay.